address just five points and there are many just five issues which we need in order to secure the help of Allah Rabbul Izza. number one and listen the formulas are from the Quran Allah Rabbul Izza says and it is a duty incumbent upon us to help the believers as such the first requirement in attaining the help of Allah Rabbul Izza is to be believers. And what is Iman? In the hadith of Jibreel, where Jibreel alayhi salam asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he says, tell me, O Muhammad, what is Iman? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, an tu'mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al akhir وَتُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ These are the articles of Iman. But to believe to the level where it affects your actions is what is required. If I put a bottle of poison here and you know it is poison, I say drink it, you go no, it affects your conscious behavior. You don't touch it because you know it's harms. That is belief. Like for example, the Prophet وسلم, is taking a siesta nap in one of the journeys and he وسلم, hung his sword off a branch of a, a tree. So one of the disbelievers came, took his sword, pulled it out and put it on the blessed neck of the Prophet Who will save you from me today? You see, normal person thinks, or you know, do one of those fancy martial art back kicks or something, you know, you think like that. But the Prophet وسلم, his Iman and his Yaqeen, Allah Rabbul Izza is 100%. So who will save you from me today? He says, Allah. And the man's hand froze, and the sword starts to shake, and the sword falls. So the Prophet takes it and puts it on his neck. And who will save you from me today? Do you see? To have Iman to the level that it affects your behavior. That Allah is there. What do I have to fear? He's in the cave. In Ghar al And Subhanallah. So if someone puts their head down like this, they can see you. So they have climbed up, Subhan al Khaliq, it, it, it boggles your mind. For anyone that has been to Ghar al Thawr, Ghar al Thawr is a two hour in a bit climb, correct? But the Prophet وسلم, climbed it, which is alright, because he has to, he's trying to save his life. But then you look at those that are following him, like they have come up climbing the two hour plus climb. Everything has been searched. It's just this one cave that they have to look into. It doesn't make sense not to look into this cave after a two hour journey. So now they come, the, the mushriks, to the mouth of the cave. If they look up, they can see him. So Abu Bakr gets nervous. What if the Prophet ﷺ get harmed? So the Prophet ﷺ says, La tahzan. Inna Allah ma'ana. What are you afraid of Abu Bakr? Allah is with us. You see, this shows the strength of belief, the Iman, that Allah is with me. What am I to be afraid of? What is there to worry about? Who cares if he's come here? And subhanallah, Allah Rabbul Izza saved him. So belief in Allah Rabbul Izza to the level where your heart is set free from the fears of ordinary men. Do you know what it does to you? Like you become free from the shackles of humanity. You're no longer afraid of anything. Like Yusuf alayhi salam. You'll go to jail. He said, prison is more beloved to me than, than, than what you guys are promising me. 
hunger, khalas, Allah Rabbul Izza will feed me. Sickness, Allah Rabbul Izza will cure me. Guidance, Allah Rabbul Izza will guide me. So belief like that, that is the requirement of belief for the help of Allah Rabbul Izza to come. Point number two is that be on haq. So long as you're helping Allah Rabbul Izza, He will help you. And so long as you're going to the cause of, of what is the truth and the cause of deen, your reliance is on Allah Rabbul Izza. He will help me. And the stories are so many that Allah Rabbul Izza's divine help has come to the believers. Be helpers of Allah Rabbul Izza. Be helpers of the religion of Allah Rabbul Izza. And Allah will help you. Point number three. Unity. One of the governors of one of the cities of Persia. And when the Muslims came and took over the city, he went to a tower. And he locked himself up. And they've come around him to try to get him out. And he says, listen Muslims, what do you want? I have a hundred arrows in my quiver. And is one man worth a hundred men? He said, I will surrender. If you place my hand in the hand of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu So they said, okay. So he left the quiver and the bow and arrow and he came down. So they took him to Umar ibn al-Khattab and this is a long journey all the way to Medina. They sent him with a delegation. And when he reached Medina, they put on his normal clothes, like, you know, the pomp and ceremony of the Persian rule. And they bring him like this to Umar ibn al-Khattab. So they went to the masjid and he's not in the masjid. So some little kids come playing around. So they go, are you looking for the Amir al-Mu'mineen? They go, yes. So he goes, he's sleeping there besides the masjid on his shawl. So they went and found Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He took his cloth off and he's put it under his head and he's sleeping. So they didn't want to disturb the Khalifa. So they go, shh, sit quiet wait for him to wake up so this guy uh, says where is Umar and he says subhanallah that one day is Umar so he said where is his gods where is you are a people that have just conquered Persia where is the gods where is the court where is the scribes so in talking Umar woke up and no, Umar seeing him, he said, is this the general from this place? They said, yes. So Umar radiallahu anhu tells him, tell me, what is your situation? So this man says, and listen carefully. He says, before, we used to fight you. And it was us against you. There was no Allah on your side and there was no Allah on our side. Like Allah Rabbul Izzah wouldn't help you and he wouldn't help us because you were wrong we were wrong before like before islam in the days of jahiliya so we fared better against you and we beat you and now you became muslims so allah rabbul izza helps you he's on your side and there's no allah on our side so we lose that is not your men it is the help of allah that is on your side and Umar radiallahu anhu said, and our unity, and our unity. And that in itself is the help of Allah Rabbul Izza. So a secret of success and a secret of attaining the help of Allah Rabbul Izza is to be united. And Allah Rabbul Izza says, and obey Allah and obey his prophet. And don't quarrel and dispute amidst each other. So the third of the points after belief and after being on the haq and on the path of Allah Rabbul Izzah is to be united the fourth point preparation and due diligence the early Muslims didn't win by coincidence they prepared for whatever field they were in you know you go look at the early Muslims to be a hafiz was the norm I was listening to one lecture from one of the brothers and he said one of the kings of 
Maghrib of the area of Morocco and this type of area wanted a bride for his son. But he wanted to make sure she's a good girl. So he sent a caller that whoever has a daughter who is a hafiz, a hafiz like who has memorized the Quran, put a candle in your window tonight so that we know that there's a sister here who is a hafiz of the Quran and who can be a suitable match for the son of the Amir. So that night the whole of the city had a candle in, in their windows. Everyone that has a daughter has memorized the Quran. So he thinks, well, alhamdulillah, but this is not going to help my cause. So next night, he sends the messenger out. Whoever's memorized the Quran in these books of hadith, put a, a, a candle out. And although the numbers were less, but the predominantly there were candles on the windows. There was a time where we were prepared knowledge-wise. The Prophet ﷺ would send, go learn the language of the Jews. And he came back, oh Prophet ﷺ, I can speak it and I can write it better than them. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, and prepare for them. As in for your challenges, whatever you can from might and power. And knowledge is power, Muslims. Become learned, especially for the youngsters. So that is the fourth point, due diligence. The fifth one, patience. Um, played a little clip of a student of knowledge who went to learn hadith. Learning hadith is difficult, a lot of memorization. So he tried for a little while and he goes, this is too difficult and khalas packed up and, and went. And then walking, he saw um, a stream from which water was dripping on a rock. So he said, I told myself that water is very soft. The rock is very hard. Yet the soft little thing has carved into this very hard thing. An ilm is soft, but my heart is not as hard as that rock. So if I stick to it, it will carve into my heart. So he went back into it. And slowly, slowly, he became one of the big authorities of hadith. Patience. Point is, don't expect to do everything overnight. You open a book, khalas, I should have memorized it by now. You know, you... Have the patience and the perseverance, but at the same time know when something's not working. So have the patience, Muslims, and the perseverance to keep going. And especially in da'wah. Da'wah is a game of patience. The battle between haqq and batil isn't supposed to be an overnight one. It's a constant struggle. And istiqamah is the key. So keep persistent. Do a little amount, but do it regularly. May Allah Rabbul Izzah bless you, inshaAllah.